What are the top five components of a battle ready rifle? What's up guys? We are going to talk about today the top five components of setting up a true battle ready rifle. All right, uh, this rifle, if I could only grab one to take into combat, this would be the rifle that I would grab out of all the rifles that I own. And that'll be for a few reasons. Um, if I had a nickel for every time someone asked me, what rifle did you use in the SEAL teams? Uh, I'd probably be a much more wealthy man than I am now. This is it, all right? So this is the Mark 18 made by Daniel Defense. Um, this is the platform that I decided to set up and create my battle ready rifle. Now, why did I go with the Mark 18? Well, because I have used this rifle, this exact rifle, Mark 18, made by Daniel Defense, uh, more extensively then I will ever be able to test another rifle, manufacturer, brand, setup, whatever it may be, um, as a civilian, all right? I have, with this Mark 18, I have dove underwater. I've had it for uh, days on end in saltwater environments. I've had it in the sand. I've had it uh, out on the range shooting thousands and thousands of rounds through it. Um, it's just, it's, it's a solid weapons platform and I know that the Mark 18 is a good gun because it's what I carried the entire time that I was in the SEAL team. So that's why I started with that. Um, we'll talk about what I put on this weapon, the five things that I put on it to make it, or that I think make it important and functional as an actual battle rifle. Uh, the first one, we'll talk about the optic. Um, now this is a short barrel rifle. This has, I think, a 10.5 inch barrel on it. So uh, it's more for an urban, urban environment, urban combat, uh, close quarters combat, stuff like that. Um, so I went ahead, the optic that I chose for this is the Vortex AMG UH-1. It is a holographic sight and uh, it's very similar to what we had in the military, which was the EOTech. I think this is actually a better sight than the EOTech. Uh, it just is a tank of a sight. Um, you can take pretty long shots. I mean, out to the max effective range of this weapon, you can shoot with this sight right here. A 300 meter man-sized target, you're gonna be able to take accurate shots with this holographic sight without any magnification. So that's why I went with that. It's a tank, It's um, I can take Long range shots, long range meaning 300 meters. Uh, I can also use this site in CQC or urban environments and uh, it's gonna get me quick target acquisition. Uh, it's super durable and I just really like that UH-1 more so than the EOTech, which is why I chose that. Guys, don't be scared to spend as much money on a site as you spend on the rifle. Obviously this Mark 18 was a little more, well, about three times the cost of this holographic site. But what I'm trying to explain to you is don't skimp on what you spend on the site. It's one of the most important components of the whole weapon system. So don't skimp on that. Put a good holographic site on your weapon. Number two, uh, backup iron sights, all right? Although this site is a tank, it can go down. And if this site goes down and it's the only way that I have to aim the weapon, then I'm pretty much screwed, right? I'm, I'm out of the fight, I'm combat ineffective. So I did put and always put backup iron sights on all my weapons. This thing, no telling, maybe it just runs out of batteries. Maybe it doesn't even break and, and I need to transition and take shots. Before I can get a new battery in this thing, I can flip these iron sights up and engage the target. I really like these offset iron sights made by Magpul, uh, they're just, super durable they're all metal construction and uh, they're out of the way so if i wanted to take this holographic sight off and put let's say a one to four or one to six power scope on this weapon uh, i can still leave those iron sights in place and they're not going to interfere with the the scope right so i really really like those offset iron sights as a backup sight uh, let's talk about number three now for a battle ready rifle i want something that's going to help me see in the dark, right? We, had, we have a video on uh, night vision and how we utilize this, which is the Steiner 
D-Ball D2. It's a infrared laser aiming de device. It also has a uh, visible laser and it also has an illuminator. All right. So on a combat rifle or a battle ready rifle, I'm going to have some way to utilize this weapon at night. Now, if you don't have the money to make the investment in a set of night vision goggles and an IR laser aiming device, uh, I would just put a good quality flashlight on the gun. Uh, surefire, uh, something that is going to hold up and not break down as you're out on the range practicing with the weapon. But this is a game changer, right? I can use this to uh, laser targets in the daytime. I can use it to laser targets at night with my night vision goggles. I can use it to signal uh, team members uh, using the IR laser. And then I have that big IR illuminator. If we don't have much alum at night, I can still inside a building or whatever, shine this illuminator into some dark corners and see what is there. Um, again, this touchpad right here actually is what activates the uh, IR or the visible laser on this laser aiming device. So that's all this is, is a touch pad mounted on the rail right there. The fourth component we're gonna talk about is a foregrip, uh, foregrip. So I like these angled foregrips on my weapon. I think you need something up there. Uh, if you guys have had any training in shooting rifle, you know it's good. It's almost necessary to have a good foregrip so you can pull the weapon back into your shoulder and control the recoil, right? So our hand that's on our grip, we're not using this hand to really white knuckle grip and pull this weapon in. We're actually using our front hand here on this foregrip to pull the weapon back into our shoulder. I like the angle foregrip just because when I have the weapon slung, um, it's just low profile. It's not beating me in my thighs or uh, you know, hitting me in places that I don't want to get hit. Uh, it gives me plenty, plenty to grab a hold of up there and give a nice, uh, nice firm grip so that I can pull the buttstock of the rifle back into my shoulder and control the recoil. This one is made by Magpul. I remember when these things first came out, uh, I was out training with my platoon and I saw some guys that had this thing and all we had in the teams in the, back in the old days, I guess, uh, is the, uh, just the vertical foregrips made by Tango Down. And they worked, right? But they kind of hang off the weapon and they're just not nice and tight like that. Uh, angled foregrip, so really like that. The fifth thing, the fifth thing that we're going to talk about that is probably overlooked quite a bit in a battle-ready rifle is sling attachment points. Right? It's really important to have multiple ways to sling this weapon uh, when you're actually using the rifle like it is meant to be used. You are going to want to have good re weapons retention. So with this rifle, I have a QD sling attachment right here on the base plate or butt plate of the rifle, I can hook a single point sling attachment right into that QD mount and the weapon's just going to hang just like this. Now I would use that if I was doing a CQC, something where I just needed to get quick access to the rifle. The problem with a single point sling attachment is if you need to climb over a wall, if you need to handle a prisoner, if you need to do anything with your hands, you cannot have good re weapons retention with a single point sling attachment, all right? So for this rifle, I also have a QD sling attachment back here on the buttstock. And then I have one forward up here on the rail. Now this would be for a dual point sling attachment, which is what I would run 90% of the time, right? Uh, the great thing about having a dual point sling attachment, it all comes down to weapons retention, right? So if I needed to throw this weapon behind my back and cinch my sling down because I'm climbing a ladder or climbing over a wall, I can do that. Um, if I need to handle a prisoner or do anything with my hands, I can sling this weapon, get it out of the way, cinch it down, and, and I'm good to go. I can use my hands or climb, do whatever I need to do. You can't do that with the single point. It's good to have both though. It's good to have the ability to do both, all right? But weapons retention is a really, really important part of a battle-ready rifle. Now, the sling I use is made by, um, I think it's GBRS Group. It's DJ Shipley and those guys, they put out a really nice low-profile sling and that's the sling that I use. Uh, I don't have it here with me right now, but... Um, yeah, another good brand is, uh, oh gosh, I forgot. 
Um, I'll get Blake to attach it in the show notes, uh, the slings that we used when we were in the, in the Navy. So a good sling and sling attachments for weapons retention is going to get you a long ways. All right, guys, so that's a battle-ready rifle. Again, we talked about the five parts being a good sight. Uh, number two, good backup iron sights. All right, not polymer junk sights. Uh, these are, again, offset. That's two. Number three was uh, some way to utilize the weapon at night, and either that's a flashlight or it's this IR laser aiming device. Number four was a good vertical foregrip. Number five was good sling attachment points and a good sling so that you can have weapons retention. Using this rifle the way it's made to be used, you're going to need to be able to get it nice and tight to your body and sometimes even get it out of the way so you can use your hands and do what you need to do. So that's the Mark 18 by Daniel Defense. This is the weapon that I would grab if I just had one and this is how I would set the weapon up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and let us know what you want to see next. Enough said.